Hello and welcome. I'm Rosa Piro and this is OBG Talk in partnership with the ABS-CBN News Channel. Today we will take a closer look at the economic landscape for the manufacturing sector in the Philippines. industry, furniture and fixture, food manufacturing, chemical and chemical products, as well as electronics products. All of these top performers are geared mainly to supplying domestic markets, with only the electronics subsector present as a major export commodity. This reflects a long-standing trend for the majority of manufacturing to be geared towards serving the domestic market, the second most populous in Southeast Asia with only a few specialized industries focusing on export markets. According to BSP, as a whole, the manufacturing sector produced 1.67 trillion pesos for 2015, with a contribution of 23.2% to GDP in 2015, by far the largest in the industry category. Our guest for today's manufacturing segment is Roberto Batumbacal, Country Director of Dow Chemical and Director of MCHAM and Chairman of the Manufacturing Committee. Thank you for being with us today, Bobby. Thanks for all saying. Just let us start with the overview of the attractiveness of the Philippine manufacturing sector. So this is whether domestic or international and also what are some of the drivers that will support its growth over the coming years. Okay, Rosa. The, um let me start off by saying that the past six years have been very exciting for the manufacturing sector. Um, to, get, to put it into context, let's remember that in the previous decade, um, 2000 to 2010, the average growth, uh, average annual growth of the manufacturing sector was about roughly about 4%. Right. But the past six years, from 2010 to 2016, we grew an annual average of 7.3%. So it's nearly double the growth rate. No? Uh, from what was seen to be a dying industry at the start of the previous administration, mm -hmm. it, it is probably the most surprising and the most dynamic sector in the past six years. So um, industry has been growing robustly and broadly because uh, manufacturing has many subsectors which I would like to talk about today as well. And speaking of these uh, subsectors, if you break it down a little bit more into the different um, categories within manufacturing, what would they be? Well, there's roughly about 20 major subsectors in, in the Philippine manufacturing industry, but the biggest, uh, over 40%, I suppose, would be the food manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and th that, that's very typical for a lot of developing countries like ours, right. where you have a lot of consumers. Uh, food manufacturing is the biggest. The second biggest is electronic and semiconductor mm -hmm. which is a uh, which is our export champion yes. but the third one which gr rapidly grew in the past few years is the chemical sector mm -hmm. in fact in the past six years the chemical sector was the fastest growing uh, among uh, among the different subsectors in the Philippines and then of course you've got the automotive sector you've got the steel manufacturing um, right. steel fabrication um, rubber plastics and a whole wide range of other uh, subsectors okay so it's generally broken down into subsectors but then also the different types of um, uh, characteristics that they have correct that's right um, when when you it, it's easier to characterize uh, subsectors by looking at it as a low, medium, or high tech center, uh, high tech sector, and the reason why we categorize it that way because uh, sectors belonging to those similar categorization have similar ways of. Uh, helping or incentivizing, right. meaning, uh, say the low tech sector, and, and not that they're any inferior in any way, but you know when you ha you are in the low tech sector, what's important would be labor. What's important would um, uh, it's much more so cost sensitive, whereas when a high tech sector, you're talking about you know um, important capital equipment, a lot of technology, a lot of R and D. No, mm -hmm. so those are the three. And the, and the point, uh, the the important thing to remember is that. We, as a country, cannot be focused on only one subsector. Mm -hmm. We need low, medium, and high-tech sector for a robust and long-term growth. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And on this point, um, I wanted to ask you, I thought it's the manufacturing sector is somewhat perceived as, let's say, not less important, but a little bit undervalued compared to, for example, the service sector. I know the BPO sector is sort of the flagship sector of the Philippines, but it actually has a very strong contribution to GDP, as we mentioned before, 23.2%. So I wanted to see what role has manufacturing, in your opinion, played for, for the economy of the country? And also, how can this perception be changed? Okay, I, I, that's a very good question. And I, again, I look back at, the uh, at about 2010 when people were, you know, uh, more or less, uh, or a lot of policymakers were pretty much resigned that uh, it's going to be very hard to bring up manufacturing. But uh, at that time, we found out that if you just take stock of what we have, we, you'll be surprised that we do have, we still had a lot of manufacturing uh, activity left in the country and there was a huge upside, which is what we found in the next few years. Um, so um, when you think about it, think about the f top five largest companies in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. They would, three of them would be manufacturing. You got Petron, you've got San Miguel, you've got uh, Shell. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, manufacturing never really went away in, in the Philippines. But, you know, it's natural to be, exci ex to be excited about the new industries like the BPO or the IT sectors, that kind of thing. But I think at the end of the day, economists and industry stalwarts have been reminding us that manufacturing is the main engine for growth mm -hmm. for any economy. Right, right, right. And, and now to, to address more the challenges of why manufacturing maybe hasn't developed as much. So first of all, how can the infrastructure um, be improved in order to reduce the cost uh, in manufacturing? Okay. Yeah, in, infrastructure has been a hot topic for many years, no? and, it, and it will continue to be. Uh, infrastructure is an important enabler for the manufacturing sector as well as a, a, any, any sector in the economy. No? Um, uh, r there has been a lot of work recently um, or between the uh, in, in matching the right infrastructure to enable manufacturing. We we have um, uh, we have been working on what you would call infrastructure manufacturing convergence, mm -hmm. uh, which would match exactly what kind of infrastructure is needed to move goods around, whether they're raw materials from outside or from the countryside, or moving your, moving your um, finished goods to the market. I think one of the more interesting things, um, obviously there's, this talks a lot about ports and roads, but I think one of the interesting things I heard recently was the use of rail. No? The use of rail for uninterrupted continuous flow of goods, say from, uh, from the Manila port to the major manufacturing hubs in Laguna, Batangas, Cavite, or even up north. To have a measure, I was wondering, I know logistics costs within manufacturing make up the, the large, some of the largest contribution to overall costs. And one of actually the, um, aside from logistics costs, one of the major uh, com issues that companies cite um, is the high electricity prices. So right. um, I think the Philippines has the highest in Asia, only second to Japan in terms of electricity prices. And this is often quoted by different companies as a deterrent to actually set up a plant uh, here in the Philippines. So I wanted to ask you um, how important, um, to, to what extent are electricity prices and issues within manufacturing? Okay, Ele uh, electricity costs just like a lot of uh, components of production is important huh? uh, but uh, but uh, let me let me explain it very carefully that while um, uh, we, we certainly hope that we can reduce the po cost of power no any reduction in in cost enables us to be more competitive especially in this you know especially in a free market where you have to compete with every other uh, every other supplier from all over the world which generally has lower power costs than us right. however um, other data also point out that electricity is only 4.3 percent of total manufacturing costs, or, or, or uh, that's the average uh, 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 cost uh, to total manufacturing. So, um, since there are many different kinds of um, produ products produced in the Philippines, some can be very high power intensive, but some may, may need less than one percent. So. Um, uh, I wouldn't say that because power is very high that you cannot manufacture, you need to be selective right. and, uh, and um, work a lot on um, power efficiency mm -hmm. and making sure that um, you use uh, 
uh, you use the right equipment, uh, you know, uh, and uh, the right power saving devices because it's an important resource. Of course. Well then, uh, Bobby, I have more questions for you after this break. OBG Talk will be right back. The world is filled with wonders, and aviation has taken us farther and closer to seeing all of them. The world has never been smaller, yet bigger at the same time. If there's one thing I learned from flying, is that life is a continuous search for the world's greatest treasures. The World Tonight is one of the few news programs that have earned the respect of its audience. The essence of that program has always been the news stories that we gather, that we air with so much care. It's so satisfying to be part of a lot of the events that one day became historic, you know, turning points in the life of this country. Philippines, thank you, Angamite. Mabuhay! The World Tonight is one of the few news programs that have earned the respect of its audience. There's a certain class to The World Tonight, the way the news is delivered. It's a product that's kind of a rarity. That's why it has run for 50 years. It was the people who started it and the people who still run it to this day and the commitment of the station and the owners and the management that it keeps this brand alive to this day. The legacy of the world tonight will outlive us all because it has contributed a lot to the development of the media landscape in this country. We were partly reporting the news, but we were also living the history of the day. Every night from Monday to Friday, we were in the living rooms of the Filipino people. And I'm proud that I have been a part of this program that has helped mold the Filipino nation. It's so satisfying to be part of a lot of the events that one day became historic, you know, turning points in the life of this country. In this world of television, it is highly unusual for a show to survive as long as you have. It is a singular accomplishment and something that we should all really be very proud of. So congratulations to all tonight. This is Orly Mercado. I'm Diane Castillejo. I'm Cesc Orenia Drillo. This is Lauren Lagarda. I'm Tina Monzon Palma. I'm Angelo Costa Jr. in Philippines. Thank you, Argonite. Mabuha! OBG Talk. Here with us today is Roberto Batumbacan. Bobby, speaking on the human capital aspect, um, the country's large and skilled uh, workforce, what are the main advantages and drop th uh, drawbacks to Philippine labor force and um, how can they be developed to support the industry? Okay. Um, uh, there's a lot of advantages. First of all, we have three million uh, talent or workers in the manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. That's not a small number. I mean, compared to a lot of other countries, that's, I mean, of course, it's not a China or in India, but it's a significant number. But an another important thing is that there's still a lot of people, and normally when you have um, economic pro progress, you have farmers moving into the manufacturing sector, creating higher value. So I would say for companies going to manufacturing, here in the Philippines, there will be labor, not just today, mm -hmm. but in the uh, com uh, coming years. We are also, uh, we, we're also very talented people, and we've shown that mm -hmm. again and again. Even in regions, a lot of our experienced manufacturing people take leadership roles in many countries across the region. Huh? 
And I do have to remember that, you know, Philippines was in the manufacturing game decades mm -hmm. early, earlier than other countries. So we have a lot of people who've gone through um, um, technical education, um, engineering education. So we have this base knowledge that will enable it. And um, one other topic I wanted to discuss with you, if one looks at the domestic manufacturing sector, uh, it has been quite successful in component manufacturing, for example, microelectronics for automotive parts. Mm. So I wanted to ask, what is the role of Philippine manufacturing in the global supply chain? Okay, very good question. We participate in two areas, right? Um, you, we have the uh, exporters, uh, whether they're uh, foreign or, or local companies, right. and they engage in the global value chain by providing one component, one or two components into a into a production series that ca can include J uh, Philippines, Japan, China, or, or, or the Western countries. That is how the global value chain works. And, um, and Philippines is able to, the Philippines is able to find a particular niche or area in that value mm -hmm. chain. And that's very important for us to participate. On the other hand, you have domestic producers operating in the Philippines that is able to provide uh, products from, say, from from agricultural products all the way to um, a, a kind of a kind of food or a bottle b bottle juice that's pretty much a whole chain in itself so the answer is we need both mm -hmm. we need both and the beauty of this market for manufacturers is that we have a significant and large consumer market right. which not every every country have mm -hmm. so uh, you know there are uh, there's a, an abundance of opportunities for manufacturers both for export and as well as for domestic consumption. Mm -hmm. And on this topic with respect to the global supply chain um, and also comparison with other countries, how competitive is Philippine manufacturing within the ASEAN context and uh, what should it do to, to boost its competitiveness compared to the neighboring countries? Okay, we've gone a long way. Uh, let me cite just one study and there have been many studies. Last year, JETRO of yes. Japan published uh, published their um, cost um, their annual survey of uh, ma uh, of uh, manufacturing costs across the different locations in Asia mm -hmm. they do this every year for all countries in Asia and guess what Philippines is the third most com most cost competitive location in Asia mm. we um, in, in total cost we're we're more competitive than Vietnam or China so that's good news. Yes. I mean, I, I'm not surprised why there's a lot and of Japanese that, moving in. And that's why it's a good opportunity to keep on talking about the good news. Okay, and last question that I have for you today, since there is a change in the administration and there is an opportunity to re revitalize the manufacturing sector and make it flourish, um, what kind of uh, policy would incentivize manufacturing, um, manufacturing activity here in the Philippines? Okay, let me start by saying that the previous administration has in institutionalized a lot of uh, um, uh, policies including road mapping, manufacturing resurgence program, but I'm also excited about the administration with their strong focus on MSME, micro, small, medium enterprises. Right. What, what they'd like to do is make sure that the small, medium scale enterprises have a role in this value chain, that they're integrating into it. And, we've, if, and if we're able to do that, then we would have a more robust inclusive long-term growth for the manufacturing sector for the Philippines. Right. And more into specific, how, what kind of policies uh, across sectors should be emphasized? What kind of uh, markets should be put more, more, more investment in? Uh, well, um, you know, well, I think it's important to remember um, our earlier point that diversity is important. We need to support and incentivize a wide range of manufacturing sector. That makes it robust. Having multiple products enable us to grow when some sectors are slow and when so the other sectors are faster. No? So infrastructure comes into play. Um, our policy in science education, STEM education already started. We're very excited about that. In the future, we'll have a lot, a lot of young people interested in, in sciences and engineering coming to the workforce and continue the roadmaps. We started with five roadmaps in 2010. We ended with 32 roadmaps in 2016. Okay. We'd like to implement them. Any kind of particular area in which you think uh, a new roadmap could play a particular role or could be helpful for to develop that sector? I think the most interesting thing uh, moving forward is how we integrate agriculture, 
mm-hmm. in, in manufacturing. Okay. See, I mean, if we could grow so fast in manufacturing, we hope that we can um, um, uh, grow just as fast in the agricultural sector, and that would be very, very inclusive. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Bobby. Thank you, Rosa. And uh, that's today's edition of OBG Talk in partnership with EABS-CBN News Channel. I'm Rosa Piro. Thank you for watching.